Hey, what is up, YouTube? It is your boy, Sneed with Sneed Sports. We've got the Monday edition of the NFL recap. We're going to take a look at all the games that were played yesterday and earlier in the week. Uh, we are getting, you know, kind of the tail end of the season now, and all these games have playoff implications and other things that are going on. So what I'm going to try to do is spend about a minute on each of these games, kind of just discuss the outcome, where the teams are headed, and what important things we need to know about these teams moving forward. Let's go ahead and get it started with the first game. So the first game was played earlier in the week. This was between the Minnesota Vikings and the New Orleans Saints. A uh, blowout, in my opinion. Final score was 52-33 to 33 in favor of the New Orleans Saints. Obviously, they have huge aspirations of where they want to go in the playoffs. Drew Brees had a very pedestrian game. Two picks, no TDs, threw for 300 scoreless yards. I think it was 19 of 26. Taysom Hill had a couple of attempts, but really the story was Alvin Kamara being able to run all over the lowly defense of the Minnesota Vikings. It's also thrown Latavius Murray was effective, 12 rushes for 72 yards. Kamara with 6 TDs, 22 carries, 155 yards. In terms of the receiving core, pretty mixed up there. Uh, very effective game for the Saints. Uh, not so great of an outcome for the Vikings, who are all but, you know, just kind of out of the season here. Just hasn't worked out for them. Kirk Cousins, 3 TDs, no picks, a decent game with 291 yards. Uh, Adam Thielen had a big game as well with a TD, eight receptions and 97 yards, but overall a letdown game for the Minnesota Vikings. Next game is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers versus the Detroit Lions. The Buccaneers in a blowout fashion, 47-7. to Horrible game from the Lions who actually did not score until the third quarter and it was their only score. Tampa Bay actually had all their points that they needed to win in the first quarter. They had a great first half. Tom Brady was on fire, hitting his receivers all over the place. 22 of 27 for 348 yards and four TDs, no picks. Blaine Gabbert came in in relief duty and threw for two TDs. Insult to injury. Uh, their rushing uh, attack was led by Vaughn with 15 carries for 62 yards. He led the backfield. Leonard Fournette with nine carries for 34 and a score. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Rob Gronkowski all getting scores. Let's throw in Antonio Brown also getting a score. Gronk had two TDs, Mike Evans with two. So a pretty good game for them. From the Lions side, nothing really to take home other than Chase Daniel, you know, Matt Stafford, and I don't even know who the other guy is. They all threw, um, you know, some passes, but there was just nothing good to take away from them. Horrible outcome, horrible game for them. They're probably looking to move on from this loss. Next, we have the 49ers versus the Arizona Cardinals. The Niners are victorious, 20-12. to It looks like the San Francisco 49ers... Just fighting to, you know, finish out the year on a good note. The Cardinals trying to, you know, win some games here at the end of the year. They ended up taking the loss. I think from the uh, Niners side with uh, Bethard through three TDs, 182 yards. So not big yards, but was able to be effective in throwing the, those TDs. Uh, Wilson was the big rusher for them. 22 carries for 183 yards. An eight yard per rush average. Very good. Uh, George Kittle led them in receiving four receptions for 92 yards. From the Cardinals side... Uh, Kyler Murray threw a pick, 247 scoreless yards. He rushed for 75 yards and 8 carries. Kenyon Drake, 18 carries for 45 yards and a score. Uh, tough loss for them as they try to kind of fight here at the end of the year. And um, looks like the Niners are going to be resilient enough to try to win some games as well. Tough outcome for the Cardinals as they try to compete for a playoff push. Next up, we have the Dolphins versus the Raiders, and this was an absolutely insane game. The score is strange in and of itself, 26-25, Dolphins with the win. The Dolphins' magical season continues. They are now 10-5, the Raiders fall to 7-8. I believe this puts them out of playoff contention. Uh, from the Dolphins' side, uh, Tua actually threw 22 times for 17 completions, 94 yards, and a TD. Ryan Fitzpatrick came in for relief. He made the kind of the game-winning throw. Uh, 182 yards passing with a TD. No picks from those guys. Gaskin was the leading rusher, 14 carries for 87 yards. Uh, he was also the leading receiver, 5 catches for 82 yards and 2 TDs. So he really was the focal point of the offense. And then from the Raiders' side, uh, Derek Carr threw for 336 yards and a TD. And their leading rusher, Josh Jacobs, 13 rushes for 69 yards. Um, Receiving-wise, Nelson Aguilar had a huge game, 5 receptions for 155 and a TD. That was really it. Darren Waller had a good game as well. Five receptions for 112 and no TDs. Tough loss for the Raiders and a tough way to lose it. Next, we have the Giants and the Ravens. And the Ravens pulled out the win, 27-13. The Ravens now 10-5. The Giants now 5-10. Two teams on totally different paths. One, obviously looking to compete for a Super Bowl. 
The other just kind of scraping and scrapping here at the end of the year. Daniel Jones in the losing effort, 252 yards with a TD. Uh, Gallman was their leading uh, rusher, six carries for 27 yards. Not much on the rushing. Uh, Sterling Shepard, the leading receiver, nine receptions for 77 yards and a score. Evan Ingram, seven receptions for 65 yards. From the Ravens' side, Lamar Jackson, two TDs on 183 yards passing. Gus Edwards, the leading rusher, 15 for 85. Lamar Jackson, 13 rushes for 80. And uh, Mark Andrews, the leading receiver, six for 76. And I think the lone touchdown, or no, two touchdowns, Des Bryant with a score and also uh, Marlon Brown with a score. So that means the Ravens are getting hot at the right time as they make their push for the playoffs and they look to compete to solve a spot there in the AFC North. For the Bears and Jags, we have the Bears pulling out the big win, 41-17. Their offense was absolutely cooking. They're getting hot at the right time, 8-7 and seven now. The Jags going in a totally different direction, 1-14. For the Bears, Mitch Trubisky getting hot at the right time, 2 TDs, 1 pick, 265 yards on 24 of 35. And then for their rushing, uh, Montgomery with 23 carries for 95 yards and a score. Pierce with a score as well. Trubisky also with a rushing score. For the receivers, Robinson, 10 receptions for 103 yards. Uh, Jimmy Graham with two TDs on four receptions and 69 yards. So that offense is really cooking from the Jag side. Not so great. Uh, Mike Glennon, two TDs and two picks on 211 yards passing. And uh, not really much great going on other than the catch from DJ Chark, which was awesome. Uh, so poor game for them. Uh, it looks like the Bears, you know, they, they really seem to be cooking now. Things are kind of working out. Mitch Trubisky, kind of like the comeback player of the year, if you look at the beginning of the season until now. Don't look now, but the Bears are getting hot at the perfect time. Look out for them moving forward. In a game that I was not expecting to look like this, the Falcons versus the Chiefs. The Chiefs squeak it out 17-14, to probably closer than it should have been. From the Chiefs side, Patrick Mahomes, two TDs and a pick, 278 yards passing. Sammy Watkins threw a pick, uh, just to kind of throw that in there. Uh, Williams, their leading rusher, 10 carries for 46 yards, no TDs on the rushing side. Travis Kelsey, the leading receiver, 7 receptions for 98 yards and a TD. Robinson also had a TD. Really just not a typical day for the Chiefs. The offense really wasn't clicking as as good as they should have been. Uh, but the Falcons are not great. Matt Ryan, 300 yards passing on two TDs, no picks. Ito Smith, 10 carries for 46 yards, no rushing TDs for them. Hayden Hurst with the only receiving TD. Oh, no, actually, uh, Laquan Treadwell, I think it's Laquan, maybe not. Uh, he had a TD as well, but really just not a good game for them. Not a good game overall, but the Chiefs, Obviously, they know how to win. They do have the best quarterback in the game, in my opinion. So it doesn't take much for them to just close things out. Uh, but look for them to kind of, you know, close things out week 17, just keeping everybody healthy as they move forward to the playoffs. Now we have the Bengals and the Texans, 37-31 to 31 in favor of the Bengals. Now 4-10-1, the Texans 4-11. Uh, neither of these teams really making any type of noise going into the playoffs. In terms of the Bengals side, uh, Allen passed for 371 yards and two TDs with no picks. Uh, Samahi P. Ryan, I think, had 13 rushes for two TDs, so he had a pretty good game. Gio Bernard threw in 65 yards on 16 rushes. T. Higgins with a TD, a great catch, six receptions for 99 yards. And Erickson with six receptions for 88 yards. They, they mixed it up pretty good. Even A.J. Green got four receptions for 64 yards. From the Texans side, uh, Deshaun Watson did throw three TDs, had no picks. Uh, he rushed for 38 yards. Duke Johnson rushed 12 times for 128 and a score. Brandon Cooks, the leading receiver, 7 for 141 and a score. Darren Fells and Duke Johnson also had rece uh, receiving scores. So not really a meaningful game, but for the fans, they're great to see the Bengals competing there to get that win. Colts versus Steelers, and the winners are the Steelers. They are now 12-3 with the Colts 10-5 after the 28-24 victory for Pittsburgh. From the Steelers' side, Ben Roethlisberger passed for three TDs on 342 yards, 49 attempts. He made 34 completions. James Conner with the TD, five carries for 20 yards. They just do not run the ball very well. Juju Smith-Schuster with nine receptions for 96 and a TD. Johnson with a TD as well, eight receptions for 75. They also had Eric Ebron get in with a score. So really their focus is passing the ball. They are not effectively running the ball whatsoever. I don't think that pans out well for them moving forward towards the playoffs. The Colts had a great first half, but choked the game away. Phillip Rivers, a TD and a pick, 270, 270 yards passing. Their leading rusher, Jay Taylor, two TDs on 74 yards rushing. Zach Pascal got the TD for them on the receiving side. Anyways, like I said, the Colts choked the game away. They're up big at the half. 
The Steelers basically scored 21 unanswered. The Steelers don't look great, but hey, a win's a win. Panthers versus Washington, the football team from Washington. Anyways, Panthers pull out the win 20 to 13, 5 and 10 now with Washington 6 and 9, although they are still in playoff hopes. Uh, we have Teddy Bridgewater throwing for 197 yards with a TD and a pick for rushing. Uh, Curtis Samuel actually led the team with seven carries and 52 yards. Mike Davis got the lone score on the ground. Uh, Curtis Samuel also led the team in receptions, five and 106 yards. Uh, the scores came from Robbie Anderson with a TD on seven receptions and 39 yards. For the Washington team, uh, they were awful. Dwayne Haskins, uh, absolute trash. Two picks, no TDs, 154 yards passing. Uh, he was actually benched. Uh, A. Gibson, 10 carries for 61 yards. No rushing TDs from anybody. J.D. McKissick with the lone TD on their side. Eight receptions for 77 yards. Washington is trash without Alex Smith. He's their only hope. Uh, also with the Panthers, good to see them fighting till the end. Good job of them to pull out a victory, making things complicated for Washington. Now for the Broncos and Chargers. The Broncos uh, actually 5-10 and 10 now. Chargers 6-9 and nine with the victory, 19-16. to 16. Passing-wise... For the Chargers, uh, Justin Herbert actually threw a TD, 253 yards passing. Austin Eckler, the leading rusher for them, 45 yards on 10 carries. Justin Herbert, I believe, had four rushes for 26. Uh, receiving, Mike Williams, four for 54. Austin Eckler with the lone TD on the receiving side. In terms of the Broncos, not really much to take home there. Drew Locke, two picks on no TDs, 264 yards. Melvin Gordon, the leading rusher with 16 attempts for 79. Drew Locke with the rushing TD on that side. And then Hamilton for the receptions. He was the leader, 5 for 77. Noah Fant, 6 for 65. No throwing TDs there. Obviously a horrible game. Not really great from either side. Chargers do pull out the win. No implications here for playoffs or anything, but it is a divisional game. Teams do get up for this. Uh, good to see that you know Justin Herbert finding ways to win, uh, developing that winning mentality. Good to see that. Uh, but team is kind of out of contention, so just a report. Next up, we have the Cowboys and the Eagles. Cowboys get the victory now six and nine. The Eagles four ten and one with that loss, thirty seven to seventeen. From the Cowboys side of things, Andy Dalton threw three TDs and one pick, twenty two of thirty. Zeke Elliott with a hundred yard rushing day on nineteen carries, no TDs rushing, but C D Lamb did get a rushing TD on his lone attempt for nineteen yards. Michael Gallup, the leading receiver with two scores. Six receptions, 121. Mari Cooper also with four receptions for 121. Again, C.D. Lamb, heck of a day for him. He got uh, three receptions for 65 in the score. So good showing by the Cowboys, winning in a big way. The Eagles, you know, with Jalen Hurts not very experienced, and that's showing. One TD with two picks, 342 yards. He was the leading rusher with 69 yards on nine carries. Miles Sanders, 15 for 57 with a score. Deshaun Jackson had the one big play for 81 yards in the TD. And that was pretty much it for them. So uh, the Eagles season, obviously not very good. Uh, they're pretty much out of everything. The Cowboys fighting for that lone playoff spot in the division by winning it. And uh, looks like they keep their hopes alive with the win. Rams and Seahawks next. Seahawks take the win 20-9. The Rams now 9-6 after dropping a few in a row. The Seahawks 11-4 with the win. For the Seahawks, Russell Wilson one TD for 225. Chris Carson, the leading rusher, 16 for 69. Russell Wilson did have a rushing score. DK Metcalf led the receiving core, 6 for 59. I think Jacob Hollister was the only one with the TD. He was 2 out of seven or two for 17. So really not a great game for the Seahawks, but enough to win. Obviously, they did more than the Rams. From the Rams side of things, Jared Goff, 24 of 43 for a pick. No TDs. Daryl Henderson leading them in the rushing attack, 12 for 62. Malcolm Brown threw in a few rushes as well. Cooper Cup, the leading receiver, 8 for 66. Reynolds, 6 for 65. Robert Woods, 4 for 48. Not a good day at the at the office for Jared Goff and the Rams. Not really effective at getting anything done on their side of things. But the, the Seahawks pulling it through. They don't look really good right now, but hopefully they get things together as they make their playoff run moving forward. Next up, we have the Packers versus the Titans. The Packers with the win, now 12-3. and three. Titans fall to 10-5. and five. This game, an absolute blowout. The Green Bay Packers pretty much doing whatever they wanted to do on offense. Not really in the rushing game, but more so in the passing game. Aaron Rodgers, four TDs and a pick, 231 passing yards. A.J. Dillon, the leading rusher, 21 carries for 124, two TDs. Aaron Jones took a backseat to him, 10 carries, 94 yards. 
Uh, Devontae Adams, an absolute monster. Three TD day, 142 yards receiving on 11 receptions. Everybody else just kind of sprinkled in there. So huge day at the office for Devontae Adams. He is hashtag good at football. From the Titans side, Ryan Tannehill, one TD, two picks, 121 yards. Derrick Henry, ineffective on 23 carries. Uh, He did get 98 yards, but he didn't get any TDs. Not a typical day for him. A.J. Brown leading the receiving core. I think it was four for 43. J- uh, Janu Smith did have a TD. Uh, Ryan Tenhill did break away for a big run where he scored a TD. Uh, three for 55 there. And lastly, we just got some bonus coverage for you. This is going to be the last game of the week. Just a preview. This is the Bills versus the Patriots. The Bills looking good for the playoffs. The Patriots looking to play spoiler here. I'm not sure if they even are in contention or if they can possibly make it. I think they're actually knocked out of the playoffs. But whatever the case may be, you know Bill Par- um Bill Belichick will be looking to play spoiler against the Bills in in-division foe, so I'm guessing he would probably be looking to uh, spoil and rain on their parade. We'll see what happens. I'm going to go with the Patriots because it's in New England, and I'm just going to do that. I'm just a contrarian. I like the Bills better. I like what they're doing. I have more hope for them moving forward. Josh Allen is a fantastic football player. The team's playing great. Stefan Diggs and company, the running game is there. I think it's going to be a close one, but I think the Patriots find a way to close it out. Let's take the Patriots in an upset, although I am rooting for the Bills to kind of get this win. I'm looking forward to what they do in the future. We'll see how they look when they make their playoff run this year. So there you have it, Week 16 in the books with the exception of tonight's game. We'll definitely bring that up at a later time. This is just you know, a video to recap everything that happened this week. If you like this type of form you know, where we're doing quick little hits on all the games, let me know in the comment section below and give this video a like. Share it if you want to help the channel out. That'll help the channel grow. We've got more content coming from the NFL, the NBA, and all things MMA. Thank you all for being here to watch. Consider subscribing and joining Sneed Sports Nation. Thank you again for being here, and we'll see you soon.